I would like to start with basics. So, an army consists of three types of regiments. Infantry, cavalry, artillery. Infantry is the cheapest one. Cavalry is stronger than infantry. It has one unique ability, about which I'll tell you later. And it's a lot more expensive. And artillery is the most expensive one, and it's a very interesting case. First, you can build it at the start. And second, unlike cavalry, it doesn't live long without infantry. You can't make whole artillery army. To build one regiment, you need 1000 manpower and some ducats. So manpower is actually extremely important. Without manpower, you won't be able to build new units and you won't be able to replenish the old ones. That's why it's better to always conserve it, to not spend it. So what is force limit? Open production interface and this is your force limit. This is not hard cap, this is soft cap. That means I can build over force limit, but I will pay a lot more. Sometimes it's good if you're playing small nations like Byzantium or Oirat and you're neighboring a very big nation from which you can steal money. In the most cases it's not really good. What to do if you want more troops but you don't have much of manpower? Hire mercenaries. They won't spend your manpower and they might have their own general. Let's have free company. Free company is always the cheapest one and it's the best one. If you're a small nation, I don't know how much development you need to have, but it comes with very big discount. It doesn't apply to Ottomans, but still it's cheaper. And about generals. If you want good general, but you can't hire him, you can buy mercenary company with good one. And about generals. You have three options on how to hire general. First option, this one, recruit a general. It will cost you some military mana and the better army tradition you have, the more pips your general will have. So the more pips, the better. Conquistadors are like generals, but they can explore terra incognita. And also you can make a ruler your general. He even may be better than your usual general. If he has high military stat, he will have more pips. But be careful, if you make ruler your general, he will die a lot more quickly, a lot more quickly. So I recommend to do it only if it's necessary to win against someone bigger. And now let's take a look at pips. So pips are not only for generals, pips are common combat modifiers. Fire in this game is long range combat, like guns, artillery, arrows. So obviously it's more useful in the late game. Shock is close range combat, like for example cavalry. Shock is extremely useful in the early game, but less useful in the late game. So generals maneuver, it does a few things. First thing, it increases your speed. Second, it increases the rate of reinforcement. Also, very unknown fact, leader's maneuver will help you with terrain. If you have a higher maneuver than your enemy, then you will ignore river and straight penalties. And siege will just speed up your sieges, nothing difficult. Briefly about war calls. It depends on your case's belly, like reconquest, conquest, well there are a lot of them. You need to fulfill this war goal, I really recommend to do it. Why? Because if you don't, you will get penalties and you won't be able to piss out as quickly. And if you do, you will be able to piss out more quickly or maybe piss out at all. But remember, if you need to occupy some province, choose the province which is the most easy to occupy and the province with fort. So enemy can't quickly liberate it. Okay, let's start with battle. So let's take a look at how battles work. This is morale. Morale is kind of health bar. If someone reaches zero morale, then they lost the battle. Battles in this game are kinda random. It's not like it's completely random. If you have more forces, if you have a lot of advantage, you still will win. But if your forces are relatively the same, it's up to dice, it's up to RNG. So these are your combat modifiers, I will talk about them later. This is your force composition. And these are leaders of different armies. Here is my leader, and Byzantium doesn't have one. And this is a very interesting thing. Imagine that this is battlefield, because it is battlefield. So game automatically places your units in the best positions. So usually infantry is in the center, cavalry is on the flanks, and everyone else, well, as you can see, if they are not necessary, they are chilling here. They aren't doing anything. Each unit has a flanking range. So basically, for example, infantry can attack someone in front of it and one tile right to it and left to it. Cavalry has flanking range of four. It has bigger flanking range. That means that it can attack someone in front of it and it can attack someone two tiles left to it and two tiles right to it. So that's the unique ability of cavalry. That means that more units can attack enemy at the same time. But it only works when you already have numerical superiority, if combat width is not full. If combat width is full, obviously flanking range is not that important. Cavalry will just deal more damage. That's it. And in the back row usually are either cannons or if you have more troops than necessary, they stand here. Each battle has two phases. First phase, fire phase. 
Well, like I said, fire is cannons, guns, long range combat. It's important that the fire phase is the first one in the late game, because when you have a lot of artillery, they fire at the same time on the first phase and kill a lot of enemies units. And second phase is shock phase, basically of close ranged combat. They happen every 3 days. What did just happen? I stack wiped army. What is stack wipe? How does it work? So stack wipe only happens if your enemy has zero morale and and it has twice as less troops than you. And also it should happen in the first 4 phases, so in 12 days. So this means if you quickly kill your enemy army, it will be stack wiped. Also stack wipe may be automatic if you have 10 times more troops. Now let's talk about sieges. So first some tips. Your armies take attrition when you're sieging forts. You can hover on this skull and see it. So for example here 500 men die each month and I replenish 300, so I lose a lot of manpower, that's bad. How to not lose manpower? If you click on province with fort, here you can see its garrison size. Multiply maximum garrison size by 3. That's the minimum amount of troops that I need to siege the fort. And add plus 1000 troops, 10k troops. Yeah, that's already good. Let's see attrition. 100 men. Now I won't lose that much of manpower. To speed up your sieges. Have good leader siege. Leader pips depends on army attrition, so it's quite random. But if you have one, use it. Use artillery. To get the maximum bonus, multiply the fort level by 5. And that's the amount of artillery you need for the maximum bonus. If fort is coastal, blockade it with your navy. So now it's minus 21, not minus 64. And also you can speed it up by doing naval barrage or artillery barrage. So let's do it and I breached the walls. What does this mean? This means that I can assault this fort. But I won't. And you shouldn't either. It works only in some very specific cases. These were the basic of sieging and combat. Now I will start Byzantium and we'll talk about something more advanced. Now what I'll do, I will open console, combat dice, I will use it a lot in my video, and I will set it to 5. This will remove all RNG from battles, so everything is fair. First tip, do not doom stack, mostly because of attrition. Just look at this, 1000 men each month. Let's look at this battle. So at the start we for some reason have this penalty. Why do we have it? What is the penalty? So I recommend to do this. Click here on political, add another map mode and simple terrain. So now when I click W I can see the terrain. Terrain is very important in combat. So in combat there is an attacker and there is a defender. Attacker is someone who moved their troops to defender. So Venice was sitting here, it arrived here first and I attacked it. But on forts it's reversed. The one who owns the fort is always defender. So for example, if Venice arrived here and I moved only after it, I will still be defender. So mountains, straits and naval units. Avoid being attacker here in these cases. Here it is, you can see dice roll for attacker minus one. So what is fire? Fire is difference in pips. The total pips in battles are not relevant, forget about it. Difference between pips is what the most important. And by the way, it also counts for units. So for example, if one tech group has better units, that means that only the difference between these units and their enemy will be calculated. So basically we have better general, but we are on bad terrain and Venice has one more cavalry. And cavalry has a little bit more pips than infantry. So it's more powerful. So Venetian general has one more shock pip. That means they get one shock pip bonus. So Albanians joined the battle. So as you can see, Venetian morale replenished a little. That's because of reinforcements. That's why it might be a good idea to split your stacks into different ones and feed them in battle. Now we got penalty from crossing because we are defenders and Albanians moved through river, as you can see. And Albanians have a very good general. Skanderberg. That means that they get a lot of fire bonuses and shock bonuses. That's why we are going to lose. Very quickly as you can see. Yes, that's the importance of terrain and of generals. So now let's roll back a little and I'll show you how to win against Fennis. I will hire Morale of Armies Advisor. Morale is very important early game. And I will open simple terrain and I will try to pick my battles. Be careful because AI knows what you're going to do. So you need to try to bait it. So now Papal States are defenseless. Quite interesting. Well, as you can see, because I had a lot of more troops, that was automatic stack wipe. Stack wipe, win, one very important thing. After each battle, you need to click on your damaged units and shift consolidate. Why? Because units at not full strength deal less damage and take more damage, so they're less combat efficient. Now I will kill this small stack, now I will kill Skanderberg because it's quite small. I think you understood. Now they have twice as many casualties, 
although they do have an advantage in quality. But because I microed, I didn't just blindly send my doomstack everywhere. I actually thought if the enemy is far away from its allies, I was able to inflict a lot of casualties. And if I didn't doomstack and have done it more efficiently, my casualties will be even less. What lessons should you remember? Pick your battles, don't fight on bad ones, shift consolidate, and one more tip for me, always have better or same military technology. Early military technologies are very important. About army composition. As you've seen in battle, you can only have so much troops at the same time. This is called combat width. Army composition depends on this number. So this basically means that in the front row, you can only have 20 troops. And the same in the back row. In the back row, only artillery is useful. So ideal army composition would be like this. 20 of summon. As you might have seen, infantry is in the center and cavalry is on the flanks. Well, basically the rule of thumb it means that it's better to have at least two cavalry, at least two of them, if you can afford it of course. But if you have money, it's better to have around four of them. So as you can see there is some cavalry on flanks, two cavalry is sweet spot. It's not that expensive, but it does grant you some benefit. Two is the most efficient, they can target two troops. If you make two more, these two more cavalry will target just one troop. As I've already shown you, the attrition is quite bad thing. So I recommend to split your stacks in two, like this. Basically it should fill your combat width and you should have around two cavalries if you unite those two armies. That was it for the early game army composition. And now let's make some tests. I removed RNG, this is full combat width with cavalry against another army. Okay, now let's do the same, the same amount of dice rolls, no RNG, but this time I delete all cavalry and replace it with free company. As you can see, almost the same casualties. Almost the same. 8000 and 8000. Okay, now let's do the same experiment, but I will delete half of Castile's army here. First with cavalry, then without cavalry. No random, the casualties will always be the same and we'll see the difference. So this is with cavalry. So we lost 4000 troops and they lost around 6000. Now let's try once again without cavalry. So we did get 300 casualties more and inflicted around 1000 casualties less. If it's worth it, think for yourself. So yes, cavalry does help you a little if there is less troops. And by the way, this is for western nations. Western nations cavalry is usually worse than a horse cavalry or Sunni cavalry. Now let's move on to mid to late game warfare. In the mid game, at 7th military technology, you get artillery. Artillery is very cool thing. Ideally, if you're really rich, as soon as artillery appears, you should create the same amount as your combat width. Here our combat width is around 24. That means ideally I should create 24 artillery. Of course I can build less. It's not really that relevant, but it would be quite cool. Here we call the same amount of artillery and of infantry. Let's unite them and let's test out. So these two armies are basically the same. Well, around the same, yes. Now let's attack with all of my stack. Yes, it's more than our combat width. Now you'll see why artillery is cool. As you can see, artillery is in the back row and it can actually fire from the back row. So if, for example, cavalry or infantry in the back row are useless, they are dead weight, artillery, on the other hand, benefits from it. It can fire on all of these soldiers, as you can see, without taking damage. Yes, we lost some infantry, but artillery is untouched. Now look at these casualties. 1000 casualties more, 3000 casualties less. Keep in mind that artillery becomes truly useful only after 16th military technology. Before this, it's better to use it in sieges. So when you can change your units, before the artillery always use offensive pips. But after artillery becomes widespread, always choose defensive. So it can't easily kill your armies. Basically, the more defensive pips you have, the less damage you will take. And that's quite important with artillery. Late game, and maybe also late mid game. The rules have changed. Let's delete all these unnecessary stacks and let me show you the new army composition meta. You want full combat width of artillery and infantry and you also want at least 20% more around. By the way, you should have at least 20% more infantry than artillery in the mid game also, but let's be honest, in the mid game it's almost impossible to get a full combat width of artillery. But as soon as you get, yes, you need more infantry. So first I would send this stack in this battle. You might think that it will lose, and it will lose, but you might not think on how it will lose. First phase, fire. Spanish cannons are quite powerful, so they will decimate our infantry, and we have the same amount of them. Well, for now nothing is happening, our reserve is working. And here it is, this is the moment our reserves ended, and artillery 
is now on the front row, and that's very bad. Artillery on the first row gets twice as many damage. Now it will get a lot of damage and we will lose a lot of artillery. 12,000. Okay, now let's load and repeat the same, but with a small change. Wait for a few days, send this stack, wait for a week, and send this stack. Now we lost zero artillery. Zero. Uh, well, technically, I could just unite them like this, but it is bad practice. Well, to be honest, I really, really wanted to show you, but it's quite difficult to trigger artificially. If you send this doom stack, each day of battle, reserve troops will lose 2% of morale. So, it's better for them to stay here and not lose morale at all. For this to matter, there needs to be a very long battle, and it usually happened in the late game. So, you need to have some reserves, so your artillery doesn't go to the first row. If it does, minus artillery. And also, by the way, it's better to lose infantry than artillery, because artillery is very expensive to reinforce. And also, you could in theory put cavalry, but like I said, not more than 4. Or maybe 6, not more than 6. Depends on your military technology. It isn't really useful in the late game. Well, it's the last thing about army composition. Of course, cavalry may be not the best choice as western power, but as hordes, Poland, maybe even Ottoman, someone with a lot of bonuses to cavalry. You should build cavalry. You should. Now let's briefly talk about modifiers. There are a lot of them, but I will tell you about the most important ones. I think it's best idea to start with morale. Morale is very important in the early game and less important in the late game. In the late game, the most important modifier that you can stack is discipline. And also compatibility. They are quite similar. If morale is just your health bar, discipline will help you to deal more damage and more casualties. Army tradition is quite important, and how to get it? So, to get full army tradition, you shouldn't with the pole forts. You don't need to do it. And you need to have as many forts as possible. If you have enough of forts, you will get plus one army tradition a year. Here it is, plus one yearly army tradition from forts. That's the maximum. Also, the more you have, the faster it will decay. So it would be really difficult to maintain it at 100. But it's possible. To do it, you need to constantly be at wars. Constantly, without breaks. If you are, then you always will have a lot of arm tradition. Military tactics. Well, it comes from your discipline and from military technology. It's one of the reasons why early military technologies are that good. So, for example, here, increase will be around 50%, and that means you will get 50% less damage. After some time, of course, it will become less and less of increase, but still, it will give you a very big advantage. Basically, just stay up to date on your military technology. Well, and you get siege ability mostly through events, some ideas, and also through spy networks. Siege ability will just let you siege faster. Also, there is army professionalism. To get it, you either need to drill your armies or just hire generals and it will increase manually, but if you are mercenaries, it will decrease and cancel the last few years of your progress. So if you want good professionalism, you need to forget about mercenaries. And it will take quite a long time to get it to maximum. And now let's talk about some general tips, tricks. Well, let's start with the usual carpet sieging. So how to carpet siege? Click S, then select once again and once again, until you have 2000 troops. Click once again and you will get the biggest army here. Again S, S and S. Now click on any province you want to siege, select your province, click this shortcut, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, very easy. Another tip. Well, it's not always useful, but it might be. Now you can also do this. It's not really popular, because it's not really necessary, but Ctrl and number. Ctrl 1, Ctrl 2, Ctrl 3. And now we'll just click on number. Yes, it chooses the army. Yes, you can assign armies like this. Also about micros. So for example, you want to select only ships, not armies. Ctrl and do this. It will select only ships. For example, also you want not to walk somewhere, but to transport by navy. Control, right click. Control, right click. Very easy. Like I said, put your simple terrain on some shortcut, it will help you. So, hordes get big bonuses on flat terrain, like steps, farmlets, grasslands. That's why if you're playing against horde, you shouldn't fight them on flat terrain. Okay, so imagine other nation is trying to get to you, it's trying to kill you. What to do? How to escape? Scorch Earth. It will reduce the movement speed of your enemy by 50%. Also, you can hire a leader and find maneuver if you want to escape. Well, anyway, because of Scorched Earth, I could escape. And one more trick that's more like exploit, but I doubt they will ever fix it, because they haven't yet. It's quite old, I don't remember how old, but it's old. You move to this province, there is a lock, and you might think that it's impossible to move to other provinces without going here first. It's possible. Control, right click. Confirm. Here it is, you cancelled your movement. I don't know why they haven't fixed it yet, but if they haven't, you can use it. I use it personally. And also about Scorched Earth. Let's imagine it first. Send small stack and then reinforces in late game. Reinforcements will arrive later. Another tip. So, for example, someone sieges your fort. So you should move your army here immediately, as soon as it happens. And of course it would be helpful if you had some cannons 
or fleet so you can level barrage. Basically you need to break walls so you can assault. So after someone captures your fort, the garrison is in full. That means you can assault without any casualties. So let's sum up how to win in battles and in wars generally. So obviously you always want good generals with as much shock and fire as possible. If you don't have one, you can try to hire mercenaries and with good generals, like this one for example. Get as much bonuses as possible, like hire some advisors, complete military ideas. Also I recommend to pick your battles. For example, it might be not the smartest idea to fight on mountains, you will get a lot of losses. Instead you should try to be defender at bad terrain and you may attack if it's flat terrain. Also generally I recommend not to engage in battles that you might lose, try to pick it. So for example try to kill small individual stacks. And most importantly always conserve your manpower, manpower is very important. Well anyway I hope you found this guide helpful and I hope you will start winning wars. Thank you for watching, hope you liked this video, if you liked it please like it and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.